We have previously covered how in an electric and plasma universe stars are strung out on giant filaments called stellar Birkeland currents. We have discussed in the precession series that these filaments will follow a wave motion in and out of the galactic plane. Evidence to support this concept has been difficult to find as plotting the motion of stars only gives the instantaneous motion and does not show how this might have changed over time which is what would happen if it followed a wave motion. In a recent study, astronomers have discovered that what we thought was the Gould Belt is in fact one of these stellar filaments, which seems to snake in and out of the galactic plane. So this finding is the first confirmation of this concept of a stellar Birkeland current weaving in and out of the galactic plane. Let's take a deep dive into their findings and discuss the implications. While astronomers were mapping the distribution of vast clouds of dust and gas which pepper our galactic neighbourhood, they stumbled across what they called a cosmic wave. These clouds are regions where new stars are believed to be born. We have previously covered the Gould Belt in the Precession series, and this is a ring of stars which appears to be much bluer and is believed to be an active star-forming region. Being able to map structures in our neighbourhood is extremely difficult as we sit inside these structures. And this new study claims that the old mapping of the Gould Belt is incorrect, and it does not form a ring at all, but instead forms a gigantic wave pattern that follows our local spiral arm. In order to map these stars, they rely on the principle that starlight will appear redder when it passes through certain gas clouds, just like the sun appears redder at sunset, due to the dust in the atmosphere. The stars in front of the gas cloud would therefore appear normal, allowing them to map out the locations in a completely different way. Using this they were able to reveal the structure of a giant wave of connecting clouds. They have called this the Radcliffe wave. According to their calculations, our solar system lies about 500 light years from this wave, and it is thought that we crossed it about 13 million years ago, and we might do so again in another 13 million years. Now the part that they have mapped is about 9,000 light years long, and about 400 light years wide, and follows the local arm of the Milky Way. It rises and falls above the galactic plane by about 500 light years, with a wave periodicity of about 6,000 light years. Now one of the big questions that this throws up for scientists is how such a structure could form in the first place. They conceive wild ideas like a small galaxy might have clattered into that part of the Milky Way in the distant past, and of course where would mainstream be without having to invoke the mysterious dark matter concepts. There are some important takeaways from this and also some very big caveats. Currently their assumption is that this sine wave travels up and down through the galactic plane, and they assume that this would replace the Gould Belt as the Gould Belt was effectively an optical illusion. Part of the problem here stems from the fact that they have always struggled to explain the existence of the Gould Belt. The stars in this belt are not only blue in colour, but the stars within the ring seem to be rotating around the centre and they have attempted to explain this by using dark matter, but failed. And the important point to note is that this rotation of the stars in the Gould Belt has been determined by a separate measurement, and was not predicted by any models. So it is in their interest to try and remove the Gould Belt from the equation without explaining the motion of these stars. So using a different method, we would still be able to see these stars in this belt which is about 3,000 light years across. This wave-like structure is exactly what we would expect to see in an electric and plasma universe. Birkeland currents are thought to flow inward along the spiral arms, and these Birkeland currents do not flow in straight lines, but are thought to consist of many smaller filaments twisted together and are thought to produce a wave pattern. This would mean that the Birkeland current would follow the arms of the spiral and would weave up and down through the galactic plane, which is exactly what this study found. Are we seeing a small part of a larger filament, maybe a more active region towards the centre? 
The odd alignment of the ghoul belt, which is aligned to the local chimney, would be explained by the fact that it is just part of a Birkeland current which passes through the local chimney as the wave moves from above the galactic plane to underneath it. And this is a large structure that we sit on the edge of. Some event in the past caused a huge Z-pinch explosion to occur, creating the structure and expanding the ghoul belt, leaving the Pleiades at the centre of this chimney structure. Of course, this comes as no surprise. Wal Thornhill had long ago predicted that currents flow along the arms of the Milky Way, and Don Scott predicted that they would have a Bessel function field. And once again, these predictions are being proved correct. Now we can take this idea of the Bessel function arms one step further. We would expect to find other helical streams at other distances travelling parallel to the arm. Now would it surprise you to know that these have already been found and mapped out? In the mainstream model they think that these outer streams are caused by shear forces, and when you examine their working they refer to the formation of clouds that have feathers and spurs, and this sounds an awful lot like the forking structure we see in a discharge pattern. Again, on its own they have an explanation for one aspect, but the concept of this Bessel function Birkeland current would explain all of these structures in one model. So this study and correlating it to the other findings shows that our local Milky Way arm is created by a large Birkeland current which is comprised of smaller and smaller parts. Here we are seeing one part of a twisted double helical strand, but you also find evidence that further structures have been identified which may be part of a larger Birkeland current. We also see that as this Birkeland current intersects the galactic plane, some event triggered a Z-pinch, which created not just the local chimney, but also the ghoul belt. One important aspect that I would like to return to is to try and understand how the position and velocity within a Birkeland current affects the current density a star receives, and therefore the type of star it is. It is evident from looking at the ghoul belt that these stars are under much higher excitation and are receiving a much higher current density. Understanding how this, and stars like Betelgeuse and the mysterious vanishing stars fit into this, is important to understand the dynamics of electric stars. Further analysis needs to be done on this idea of the colour of a star versus its position and velocity as I think this is a clue to help us to map out some of these structures. I also think that it's difficult at the moment to really picture how these changes occur, and this is one of the things I want to actually focus on, is understanding effectively how stars can change from one type to another in an electric and plasma universe. Now it also shows that our ability to map distances to even the local stars is incredibly difficult to do. Now until our equipment to, to measure these distances and our understanding of the dynamics of what is going on changes, our ability to map these structures will always be hindered. But slowly and surely we are starting to see the picture of what is going on even within our local vicinity, which then we can extrapolate to understand what goes on at a larger scale. This is a topic that I will be coming back to. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.